Good morning. <laughs> First, I would like to share one of my ugliest experiences. About a year ago, I told a doctor that I don't want to have more children, that I have two and that they have both inherited osteogenesis imperfecta. Oh, you don't have to think like that, the doctor said. If you want, Next time, we can screen an egg without the genetic defect. My children, they are beautiful human marvels with brittle bones. However, in the doctor's imagination, they were undesirable and with defects. Whereas I have secretly been extremely happy that they inherited just this character from me. I say secretly because it's considered odd, even quite bad, to hope for abnormal features for your own kids. We are more used to hear the narratives with eugenic motives. But isn't the biological purpose of reproduction to copy the genome of two individuals and to bring forth offspring that resembles their ancestors? I can't choose whether my children inherit their mother's or father's eyes or my husband's beautiful singing voice instead of my croaking. So why would I manipulate whose bones they get? I was thought at school that rainforests should be protected so that some rare medicinal plant isn't lost accidentally. But why aren't rare diseases protected on the plea of biodiversity? Genetic defects and physical impairments may carry crazy innovations about user-friendly society or alternative ways to be human. Inheriting osteogenesis imperfecta is 50-50. So far, seven out of eight born family members have been blessed with it. We all with brittle bones have lived active and good lives. The life of my uncle, the only one with healthy genes, was pretty ugly. He drank himself to death before his 50th birthday. So for me, living in a family where the role models are genetic freaks feels familiar and safe. Also the fact that, okay, it's not possible for my kids to become firefighters or ice hockey players increases my feeling of security. Tackling on ice, sweaty locker rooms and mouth guard stripping saliva are ugly in a shivering way. Ugliness is experienced in a certain time, place and culture. So what does it tell that the disability activist was invited here to talk today about ugly? After all, it said what is made stronger in our minds gets stronger. On the other hand, the word ugly makes me also first think of the body and diseases. Vomiting, pressure ulcers, tumors, diarrhea, necrosis, pain. Disability may easily slip into this list if you consider it a medical problem. However, nowadays disability is defined through the challenges of participation. Disability is not due to missing senses, body parts or psychological skills. A way to move, act or communicate, which is different from the imaginary norms, makes a person disabled only when these variations of living are not taken into consideration. Disability is a product of social injustice. It's systematic discrimination. Defining ugliness, it, it's a moral question. Beauty and ugly are associated with goodness and badness. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, but uh, if I use the word ugly about another person, it's ethically unacceptable. Or are we, persons with disabilities, some kind of permitted exception? In many countries, we are not even regarded as human. 
A radio editor was joking that it's difficult to remember that persons with disabilities are human because they don't look like human. And it's quite unbelievable that a country like Finland decided in December 2014 that it will ratify the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. We are still waiting. Early pictures of persons with disabilities show freaks of nature. They were believed to be the expressions of the wrath of God and that's why they pique people's curiosity. Uh, freak shows were popular in the United States from mid-1800s to 1970s and the public was queuing to see persons with parasitic twins and armless wonders performing everyday tasks or to feel sick to see huge facial tumours and unnaturally bending joints. Freak shows were a good business, both to their performers and producers, yet only a small part of those born with a disability made it to courts and exhibitions. The majority still disappeared after the birth in order not to ruin the reputation of their parents as respectable citizens. And much, much later, when the reasons for freakness, such as diseases and genetic defects were found, these uh, despised and frightening monsters started to become more like objects of compassion and, and charity. However, freak shows haven't disappeared. They are now heroic tales in tabloids. Despite of her disability, Barbie Thomas is a bodybuilder. She lives alone. She puts her makeup on with her toes. Whoa. In the United States, at the same time with freak shows, several towns had the ugly law that went like this. Any person who is deceased, maimed, mutilated, or in a way deformed so as to be an unsightly or disgusting object is prohibited from appearing in public. The law, though, uh, didn't apply to everyone. Ugly appearance was a crime only in the lowest social classes to which most persons with disabilities belonged and still belong. It's quite amazing that the last ugly law was repealed in Chicago in the same year when I was born. But if you look at the beauty industry, commercials or television, it seems that it still haunts us. Internet is full of lists of ugliest people, ugliest animals, universities, homes, even coffee cups. But at the same time, entire groups of people are hidden from our eyes in everyday life. It's fairly easy to avoid seeing people with deformed or mutilated face, cognitive disabilities, mental health issues, or with the most severe disabilities. Google search ugly brings uh, the same images than the search with poor, homeless, old, fat, in the need of a dentist. And ugliest in these images is the obvious will to hurt, criticize, and differentiate. People in these images cannot be defined as ugly because there are so many other kind of images of, for example, poor or overweight people. Interesting multiple images not taken on the purpose of condemn and disgrace. But I am not going to say that the beauty is in the eye of the beholder because it's not true. Neither is it true that yeah, we are all disabled in some way. No, you are not. None of you is probably normal by modern standards, but that's a different thing. In 2010, artist and photographer Holly Norris shot the American Able anti-advertising series in which she commented uh, the images of the clothing mark American Apparel. It annoyed her how the American Apparel claimed that they are using common people in the advertisement. Yeah, for sure. Coincidentally, they just all happen to be uh, beautiful, symmetric, thin and with good skin. A little bit like models with disabilities 
are almost always amputated or with spinal cord injuries with measures of top models never showing their disability on their face. That's why Jess, who is featuring at the American Able, is such a piquant exception. When I search images of women with disabilities for my work, I see first a supply of photo agencies. They don't have anyone like Jess. They show me images of wheelchairs by windows, under the stairs or at the seashore, accessorized with non-disabled female silhouettes. The muscles of the body, the sitting position and the size of the chair in relation to the user reveal that it's just tagging. Even the angle of view is often such that I can't get an eye contact with a person. They are just disabled nobodies. Are we too ugly to even illustrate ourselves? So to fight this, we started at the Threshold Association to arrange life drawing with models with disabilities. We wanted a place where we could stare all kind of bodies in peace and to become visible in the images just as we are naked. When the same course was arranged at the crossover festival, most participants were without disabilities and they were so impressed because when drawing a disabled body, you couldn't rely on your mannerisms or the doctrines of human proportions, you just had to train watching. Modeling was also a good experience for us. We got a chance to enjoy being watched and controversially watched back. I have heard that it's now season of the beautiful mutants in contemporary art. There are many artists combining uh, science fiction, disability and malformations in their work. And let's see if it increases the tolerance towards disability. Ten years ago, I didn't yet believe that uh, the extension of the beauty ideals would ever reach us. I didn't believe that anyone would clip an image of a disabled person out of a magazine and take it to a plastic surgeon wanting to look like that. But nowadays, I'm not at all that sure. For example, prostheses have developed so much that there are people with minor leg injuries thinking about amputation as an alternative to improve their quality of life. And just as the pets are bred for the sake of appearance, we might soon want combinations of genetic defects to get a certain shape of skull, size of eyes, or the body that stays thin. Ugliness is the, uh, depends on the prevailing ideals. Out. Some people think that disability is ugly due to external characteristics and for others it's ugly because it isn't trendy to be dependent on other people's help. And correspondingly in China, the crushed lotus toes were regarded as beautiful and the helplessness due to foot binding as a status symbol. Some weeks ago, the newspaper Helsingin Sanomat had an article about Maria Mutete uh, with her burnt face telling how people are afraid of her, how they hit her and treat her like an animal. The superstition according to which injuries are the result of bad actions is sitting tight. Unlike imagined, disability doesn't protect women from violence but on the contrary exposes to it. All around the world, women with disabilities face violence two to four times more likely than other women. And it's typical that a blind is hit on the face, a crippled on the legs and a person with a back injury on the back. Just like many of us, Maria thinks that her life would improve if someone made her beautiful again. And it's easy to understand her wish. But 
not all persons with visual disabilities dream of change. In spite of this, there are interesting well-meaning courses for us on how we could learn to look a bit nicer in a very conservative way. How to dissolve bends and cover disparities with clothes and scarves and colors. Did you know that blind people are taught to avoid incompatible colors and white clothes as if stains show better in them than in other people? In spite of, uh, instead of highlighting um, our unique characteristics, we are in a way protected against imaginary shame. The thought that we would feel comfortable in our bodies and to be proud of it is regarded as odd. When I ask my friends what comes to their mind of ugliness and disability, the most common answer was the equipment. Here in Finland they are free of charge for their users, so they are also as cheap as possible. I say that the design of assistive equipment maintains the low status of disability. And same applies to barrier fitness. Next time when you go, for example, to a good hotel, compare the accessible toilet with the common ones. Have you ever been in a colorful accessible toilet with distinctive fittings? good makeup lights, perfumes for trying out, or even toothpicks. How we are treated influence our perceptions on ourselves. When I was a child, I learned from the doctors and physiotherapists how to describe myself on application forms and to curious people. And when I was around 11, I knew that I'm too short, I'm flat-footed and hard of hearing, and that I have a pigeon chest. At that age, it wasn't really nice to stand in front of the mirror trying to figure out what the doctor meant with that. <laughs> Later, I heard many other confusing things, such as the appearance is either for me or against me that it's ugly to find oneself beautiful and ugly not to smarten oneself up. That ugliness is just an attitude which you can learn to get rid of, but it's polite to correct disturbing defects with surgery if you want to become, for example, a teacher. By getting rich, it's possible to get rid of ugliness, though ugly people cannot be successful. Ugliness is pitiful and, and pity is ugly. When I told my friends that I am going to talk here about disability and ugliness, they said that it doesn't work. You are never disabled enough and you are not ugly enough, not even without your makeup or your silicone breasts. So I was planning stripping down to the skin and show you my deformed back and all my scars, but due to broadcasting, I don't dare. <laughs> Maybe with a paper bag on my head it would have been easier, but you remember in a paper bag trick you should have a sexy body and an ugly face, and I think my case is rather the opposite. And in that case you wouldn't have heard my speech either, but that doesn't matter because according to studies, disabled and ugly people aren't listened or taken seriously anyway. So I continue now inside of the bag. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>